Pritilla. I've got this winch on the back of my tractor and this thing is super handy for getting different implements um, hooked up and stuff and I need to fix that so I've got some problems with water in there that's obviously not a great thing but I don't know about a year ago it just stopped working I haven't used the tractor a whole lot since then but I've got a lot of projects that I need to be using uh, that I'm gonna need this for so I want to get this brought in and then I'm going to just figure out what's wrong with this also, uh, I had some intermittent issues with the light, so I'm probably going to see if I can fix that. I might swap that out to an LED. And then ultimately, I need to get this thing parked in the shipping container because look at all this rust. I've got another winch, like I've got a, a 3,000 pound winch in the sea can, but I've got another project I want to save that for. And you know, just times when, you know, I, I hook one side in, the other side's out, it's so fast and convenient just to grab the winch on here, pull it in this way, it makes hooking up uh, attachments to this thing so much, much easier. And then it's also handy. I mean, when I'm pulling harrows and stuff, I just hook it up directly to the winch. But um, it really would be good if I can get this thing working again. We are disconnected. First thing we'll do is see, see if we have any power coming here or not. Ow. I knew I should have taken those things off. Oh boy. Sure doesn't look too good, does it? So what we have is this wire here is actually connected directly to the battery. Not sure if that's the best way. And then this is, uh, what do they call these? Those little, whatever the heck those things are, once they draw too much current, it'll just kind of heat up and then cut out. So what I want to know is if I have power coming to here. <clears throat> Come on. 13 volts. 13 volts, so this is good. We're getting power going all the way through. Let me just see. If this ground is good. Let's see if this ground cable. We'll check that at the back here. This is the one coming from the battery right here. Which is these wires here. So in theory, we should have power there. Getting anything on there, so that's a positive. Is it just not reading through the rust? I think this thing's just completely stripped out. Ah. Let's see if I can do this without touching anything else. Oh. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. Terrible. Don't know if this is even going to be salvageable. Okay. There we go. Well, we should be able to get a reading off of that now. Not very good connections, so that might be part of the problem. <clears throat> I 
Okay, I might disconnect. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna disconnect that little overload thingy. Just so we don't accidentally touch it on anything. Oh, just like that. <laughs> Touched it out against the fuel pet cock. And that's not what I want to do. Okay, so now we don't have any power going to the winch. Okay, feel better about that. Now I think what I'm gonna do quick, now this is something that I keep forgetting to do, but I'm learning to get better. Before I take anything apart, it just makes sense to take a photo of it. So I'll know that that, what's in my hand, is from the battery. I know how this thing's supposed to be hooked up. Boy, oh boy, that's crazy talk. I wonder if the switch is just done. Let's uh, let's go take this thing off and see what we see what we find. Okay. Let's see what kind of continuity we have. Look at this, I need my need my photo already. Okay, so the wires going to the winch were these ones. This was... Yeah, I'm getting nothing happening in here. So I think... The whole, like, I can't get any continuity no matter what I press. I think the switch here is just done. I think I'm going to go grab the one out in the sea can and just have a look and see, see what that one does as far as these switches. I might be able to look and, I don't know, I, like, in theory, I would think that if I... I go ahead and hit each one of these, like every combination, while pressing the buttons, I should get something to ring for continuity, right? But nothing is ringing at all, so maybe we've got some issues. Maybe this whole thing, like something in here is just done. The contacts inside of there. Actually, you know what? Okay, this should open this thing right up. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so... I don't know if we want to be doing this. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder this thing is not working. And there's no way you're going to get contact there at all. That's funny. So what I need to do is clean this up. I think I have some electrical contact cleaner out in the in the sea can. So I need to go ahead and get that cleaned up, clean all this up in here, and I think we should be able to put it back together. 
I'm also going to need to find some of the other screws. I'm not going to put that one that's really stripped back in, but I think we found the problem. Hopefully we can get this cleaned up. I'm going to go see what I have out in the sea can. All right, I found this stuff out in the sea can. Who knows how long it's been around. You know what? We're going to scoot these knafts out of the way so we don't wreck them. Oh. There we go. We'll see what happens. All right, so we got back from dinner and uh, I don't know what that stuff actually did anything or not. They're still pretty dirty, so. Excuse me, Ford them with a little diamond burr, kind of clean the tops of those real quick. That should be good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo basically this set, clean it, then put it back. This set, clean it, put it back. Just that way we're not gonna lose any of them. Now I'm gonna put a little dielectric grease on everything when I put it all back together. So this little block here has all these little jumper bars. Um, you can see, so we come in from here to here, there to there, there to there, there to there. And each one of those lines up with a terminal, like a post on the back side. And then obviously that's what these will touch. So this just kind of distributes it and then this will give power for the, the different direction. Interesting, quite a simple way to get things done when you, when you kind of take a look at it. Okay, so pop this in. Clean this guy off. These are the best pliers ever for stuff like this. See that tooth pattern? Makes it really nice for gripping onto parts. Oops, almost forgot my dielectric grease. All right, so I'll go ahead and clean all these other pieces up, put this thing together, and then we'll go put it on the tractor and see if we can get this thing going. Cool. All right, give these a quick little brush. These ones actually aren't too bad. I mean, from the power, these two. Now, let's hook up the winch. Okay, now I'm not sure, don't believe I need the ignition on for this. 
<laughs> I'm so pleased. We got it fixed. It works. That's exciting. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some silicone around here while we close it up just so we can keep all the moisture out of here and then I'll go ahead and just clean this out a little bit. Now, I don't have any silicone right now. I've just got this high temp gasket material. So we'll use that for some of this stuff. One of these uh, screws broke off. So the result is this. Not ideal, but it'll work. All right, I think one of our big problems that this screw is missing. There's a little bit of a crack in there. This thing has to live outside for right now. So mostly I just want it sealed up. I really don't care how it looks, obviously. But that is gonna seal real nice. And a lot of little grip too. I think once this stops working i'm just gonna order a new controller just wanted to make sure that the winch itself works i know that so that's good i'll just let that dry right there oh yeah farmer style now for this thing i don't like just having it wrapped in electrical tape but at the same time well i'm just gonna do it I would not, I would not say this is the right way to go about it, but it's what we're going to do for now. I, I always have in mind I want to do a restoration on this tractor. Um, but I want to get all the heavy, junky work on our land done first. I don't know, at the same time, I mean, I bought this tractor right when we bought this land. Um, and I bought this tractor, and then right after that, I bought a ship, my shipping container, my sea can, so that even before we lived out here, I had this in my sea can. That way, I had my tractor on my land, and um, it's been a rock solid little number. This is a 1982 Unimoto Best E23 two cylinder diesel, it's like 1283cc. Nice little liquid cooled tractor, and then it came with a uh, Hinimoto rototiller that was like, it was a package deal. It was kind of, this thing was kind of designed for this little rototiller, and it works really good. It's got some kind of like custom, some factory mounts for the rototiller, PTO driven. Works really well. And then with it, I also got a that five foot, the M5 Dixie Cutter. And uh, I've got a lot of hours on this tractor, and I tell you what, for 4,000 bucks, you'd be hard pressed to find anything half this good. Now, eh, with the situation with the lights, I actually found the problem. These little crimp on connectors that basically kind of splice in the middle of the line. There, we got it working there now. Oh, it just turned off. If you have a look at that light, there we go. On, off, on, off. And that's just me squeezing these silly connectors. It's kind of nice because he's got it tied in right now to the low beams. So there's the low beams on the tractor, there's the high beams. But I also don't like that because what if I want to use this with high beams on? So I think I'm going to get rid of this. I've got a nice LED one I can replace it with. And I don't have a good switch right now. I thought I had one, but I don't. I'll probably end up drilling a hole right here and then mounting a proper switch. And that way I can pull this, and that way I can turn the lights on and off. The one nice thing with this right now is that it's tied to the ignition, which is kind of nice. We're gonna tackle that another day because I just don't have time to get on with it right now, and I wanna do it up properly. 
The other thing I need to do is try and figure out what type of thread this is. This ignition thing. And uh, this little ring disappeared off of there. But you can see this tractor. I mean, this is from Japan. Everything's in Japanese, so I, uh, I learn Japanese while I drive. I teach myself to read these things. And that's been great so far. PTO actually has three different speeds, which is really cool. Number one is like the standard, I don't know, what is it, 520 or something like that. Whatever we use in North America, that's what number one is. And the two and the three were just for really high speeds for the rototiller. Um, you could never run two and three for most uh, west or like most of the implements that we have here, like that Dixie cutter. <laughs> it would just go way too fast. But um, yeah, so there's a PTO. I think I've got an axle leak. I'm going to get around to fixing. I think that seal right there is leaking. It's not leaking bad, but obviously just that dirt there is a good indication that it's leaking. But other than that, this is a rock solid little tractor. I really, really like it. Uh, this here is the custom mount for the rototiller. So it just kind of two things go in there. Kind of drive up to it, hits that pa-ching, pa-ching. This one, oh, the spring. This one's a little bent. I need to spend some time on that. Get that fixed up, but pretty good little tractor. Um, love hand having this thing. I like these tires. I think they call them like the rice paddy tires or rice cutter tires. And then in the front of this, he actually put on ATV tires. So those are definitely not the tires that aren't the, the tires that came with it. I, I have it. I have them. I never put them on myself. He just gave them to me, but they're like this thin, super skinny. He says they're really nice for flat stuff, but if you ever get to deep soil, and they grab, they really grab hard. And the nice thing with these two is that they kind of float, right? I think I've got like five PSI in those, um, maybe eight, but really low PSI. And so they just kind of float in the snow and the mud. Those things do not go down at all. Do not get the front end of this tractor stuck, which is really nice. So it's a good little, good little unit here. And uh, I'm telling you, I couldn't be happier with this tractor. It's uh, even just as of now, it served us so well. Uh, I'll show you the engine quick. It's always a... I, I, I mean, you know, if I ever won a lottery, <laughs> well, first you have to buy tickets, I guess, but some guys might be like, oh, I'm going to buy sports cars or motorcycles. I'd buy motorbikes too, but I would spend a lot of money and I would buy a lot of tractors because I don't know what it is, but I love tractors. So there's a little, little diesel, pu diesel pusher there. There's our injectors. Starter, it's got a little block heater right here. And uh, so, so simple. <laughs> you've got your radiator, you've got a hose, and another hose, water pump. Like, this is a thing of beauty. But the thing I love about tractors, too, is that they're so well made. I mean, this engine and transmission is the frame of the tractor, right? I think a lot of people don't realize that, or that don't know tractors, don't know that. But <laughs> this whole tractor is literally bolted around the engine and the transmission. So you know that sucker's tough, right? Um, I tell you, just, you know, look after them, do your maintenance, don't be too brutal on them. But uh, having said that, I mean, I run this thing hard. I run it to Redline pretty much all the time. And uh, she does well, she does really good. Anyways, I'm excited to have this winch back in action. I'm gonna be using it a lot in the next couple months. Anyways guys, I was working on this this evening and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take you guys along. It might be interesting. This, this is the t type of content that I love watching on YouTube. Uh, I like watching people fix things and, and get old things working, keep old things working. Fascinating to me. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Cheers.